Assalamu alaikum and good morning. So today we're going to start with a new topic. It's topic 20 called polymerization. This falls under organic chemistry. This used to be under hydrocarbons because polymerization, the one that we're going to look at, addition polymerization, is one of the reactions of alkenes. It is actually the most important addition reactions of alkenes. As you have seen, alkenes can undergo a few reactions. One of the mechanism is electrophilic addition. This one is a type of polymerization and it's called the addition. In A2 later on, you will come across another type of polymerization, which is called the condensation type. The first learning objective that we are going to look at is to describe addition polymerization as exemplified by polyethene and polychloroethene. So another name for polychloroethene is PVC. Okay. Uh, at the same time, we're also identifying the monomers present in a given section of an addition polymer molecule, okay, uh, as well as deducing the repeat unit of an addition polymer obtained from a given monomer. So the keyword there is the repeat unit, okay. Right, so addition polymers are formed from alkenes. There are also cases where addition polymers are formed from uh, C triple bond C, okay? Polyalkenes are like alkanes. You will see later on that they are saturated. They only contain single bond in the polymers, but in the starting material, which is in the monomers, there is a double bond. So it goes from a unsaturated molecule to a saturated molecule. And because polyalkenes are like alkanes, they are also equally unreactive. Addition polymerization is the reaction in which many monomers containing C double bond C to form long chains of polymers as the only product. So here you are combining, say, 100 monomers to form one product, okay? Just like in other addition reactions of alkenes, the pi bond in each C double bond C breaks and then the monomers link together to form new C single bonds. Okay, so I just want you to add another bond there to show that the pi bond of the pi overlap of the double bond will be broken in this polymerization reaction. Okay, I will show you in the next slide, not yet, okay? So let's just go through the definition quickly and then later on, I'll give you example. Polymerization is when two or more molecules in bracket monomers join together to form a long chain um, compound. So the starting materials of a polymer is called a monomer, right? Mono means one, poly means many, okay? Monomer is small molecules that make a polymer. Polymer is a long chain molecule that is made up of many repeating units. So we'll go through repeating units later on. So here's an example of four ethene molecules to form a polymer that is made up of four repeating units, okay? Right, so what happens, this is on page one under example, okay? So I'm going to show you what happens during polymerization. So you don't have to learn the mechanism, but you just have to see um, the process of connecting the four ethene molecules, which is in this case your monomers, to form one long chain. Okay, so let's have a look. I'll try to co color coordinate them so you can see. Uh, maybe I should draw it bigger. Okay, so when drawing polymers, 
always have your carbon backbone or carbon chain in the straight line. Okay, so what I mean by this is if you are given, for example, you are given this CH2, CH2, okay? So what I want you to do is, um, sorry, this is your monomer, right? It's the same thing. It's just that this top representation is your displayed formula and the bottom representation if you, is your structural formula, okay? So you're given, uh, it's given to you in your notes already. Okay, now, so what happens if I have one molecule of ethene, as I said just now, the carbon chain or the carbon backbone, which is your carbon-carbon bonds, put it in the middle in a straight line, and then anything that hangs of it, put either up above or below the carbon chain. Okay, this one, because it's, it's an easy example, imagine if you have like CH, C2H5 hanging, okay, it will uh, get more complicated and you can get easily confused on how to draw the polymers, okay. So that's one monomer, I'm going to draw them as close as possible, that's another monomer, monomer. The third monomer, remember that each monomer is an alkene. And then the fourth one, oops. Okay, so just now the description says that the pi bond of the double bond is broken. So what happens is that for each monomer, one of the double bond breaks. Okay, so I've broken down the blue double bond. I've broken down the red one now and now doing the orange and lastly, the green one. So you can see that each carbon along this line, because they're not connected yet, only has three bonds attached to it. Okay, one, two, three, for example. One, two, three for the red one and then orange one, two, three, likewise for the green one, okay? So the bond, the new bond that they are forming is between one monomer and the next one, okay? So I'm drawing it in black now, right? So you can imagine, it. this is only for four molecules. Imagine if this goes on like, thousand ten thousand because polymer is a um a molecule it's still a molecule but made up of many carbon atoms okay so to show a polymer we usually leave our bond hanging bonds hanging because we don't know how many monomers make this polymer up all right, but if you do know that there are four, then of course you have to close it. You have you can't just leave a molecule uh, with three carbon, uh, sorry, with the N carbon atoms only attached to three bonds, right? Like here, one, two, three, and then this one is just hanging like that. No, you cannot do that. You can only do that to represent a polymer that we don't know how many monomers are involved in making them. That's why sometimes you see the uh, notation N, okay? N is an integer. It's It can be a big number. Um, so to show this, we just draw the hanging bond for polymer, okay? So this is an example of how four monomers can polymerize into one molecule. All right, so this is what I mean by, uh, this is now called a, a section of a polyethene, even though the name is polyethene, it ends with an E and E, but because they, but the molecules only contain single bonds. So it is easy to call this a polyethene, which is wrong because the name 
comes from the starting material, which is your monomer ethene. Okay, so I haven't, if you are, if you cannot spot it yet, this is my monomer. That's my starting material. This is my polymer. A repeat unit is similar, but not uh, closely related to monomer. Okay, I wouldn't call it similar, right? My monomer contains two carbons, all right? That means my repeating unit, unit must also contain two carbons, but it is a section from my product, okay? So a repeat unit is like a section of the polymer that you can uh, simplify it, right? Like for example, instead of writing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon here, what I can do is, I can just write this down, Remember my hanging bond. And then I write it in a square bracket showing that it is a section of my repeating unit times by four. Okay, the number four means I have this section times by four times. Okay, copy, paste, paste, paste four times and I will get this same molecule. Okay, so repeat unit is closely related to monomer. It has to have the same number of carbon atoms as the monomer. The only difference is in the bonds. The monomer is the starting material. Repeat unit is a section of the product. So in the product, you no longer have a double bond. Okay, so that square bracket represents repeating unit, all right? Now, some student may ask, why don't we just take one section of this as the repeat unit and then I just copy paste, copy paste and it will give me the same molecule. Now, as I said, repeat unit follows the monomer. Okay, if your monomer has two carbons, you must take minimum two carbons, right? Okay, so uh, in your notes, it's already mentioned that this is called an ethene, and then the product is called polyethene. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Uh, if you would like to label this, you can label it as monomer. And the product is a polymer. Right, um, so that's what we were talking about already. And then, um, so if we can do this for four molecules of monomers to form a polymer with four repeating units, that means we can change this into a general form, which is N. N means integer, as I mentioned just now. N times of monomer will give you a polymer of the repeating unit times by N. Okay. If asked to draw one repeating unit, don't add the N onto your diagram because N represents a large number. Okay, right? So if, it, if they just ask you to um, draw one, then... Uh, okay, actually, that's that's not uh, that's not that uh, essential. Okay, right. Um, uses of polyethene is in plastic packaging, bottles, carrier bags, food bags. Okay, that one is just some extra uh, additional info. 
Are we done with that? Okay. So I think the only thing that's missing from my slide is the one under structural formula. Okay. So structural formula is just really converting this displayed formula into structural formula, which is a simplified form of the formula, but showing you the structure. In your notes, it's written as C2H4, but I personally, I personally like it to be H2C double bond CH2. Okay. And mo molecules of the monomer will give me same thing. So you just do this. There is a hanging bond CH2, CH2, and Okay, so you might want to just add this to your notes because I am not a huge fan of the structural formula that they use in your notes, which is C2H4 instead of this. This one shows the structure clearer. All right, next we're going to look at the next um, type of polymer, which is the polychloroethene or another name for it is PVC. PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride. Now your standard naming system is the polychloroethene. Okay, but there are times when the question, the exam question like to use the term PVC. So you need to be familiar with this as well. Okay, here I've got a section of a PVC. Uh, it contains one, two, three, four, five, six, six repeating units. Okay. Now, if you don't know the monomer, sometimes the name gives you the, a hint as well. Okay. Chloroethene means it comes from chloroethene, right? So monomer would be ethene with one chlorine. So whether you put chlorine on this side or whether you put chlorine here, here, or here, it doesn't matter. But the most important thing is I like to put the carbon chains in a straight line and then anything that hangs off it, I put it above and below. Okay, so in this case, I'll just follow the um, example, the, the diagram of the, the section of the polymer. So I've got H here, Cl, H. So that's my monomer, which is a chloroethene. Um, you have this in your notes already, but in the notes, it's, it's drawn differently, but no problem. Repeating unit is, again, a section that you can take off the polymer and then imagine you copy one, okay? It's like a stencil. You copy one section, and then if you paste it, will it give you the same polymer, okay? And it turns out, yes. Just imagine you copy paste that section and then paste it. They should not change the structure of the polymer. Another way of seeing repeating unit is that it is closely related to your monomer, except it does not have the double bond anymore because repeating unit is a section of the product. And when drawing repeating unit, we use the square bracket, okay, to indicate the repeating unit. I've already uh, mentioned this in, in for the previous example. Indicating repeat unit. Don't forget also a hanging bond. Hanging bond means there's one uh, there's one bond that is not attached to an atom, okay, to show that this is uh, continuous, okay, if you, if you just, if you draw this, if you imagine you draw this, that means it is not a polymer, okay, it's a molecule of chloroethene, oops, 
So to show polymer, you will see that it's got a hanging bond. Okay, what else? Uh, same thing, if you look at the structural formula on page two, it's basically just converting your displayed formula. Right now in blue, I have displayed formula. But if I want to write down the structural formula, same thing, just change it to a structural formula, CH, CL. And then for the repeat unit as well, CH2, CH, CL with a hanging bond and a square bracket. Okay, so green is structural formula. You have this in your notes already. And blue is displayed formula. That's just to show you different way of representing monomers and repeating units. Okay. Is there anything else that I want? Okay. So that's your displayed formula. Example, same thing. Okay. If I use three monomers of chloroethene, okay, for example, again, say you were given in the question, you are given this. CHCL, okay, and then you start drawing. For example, um, and then I have another molecule. This is the most commonly made mistake by students. They connect, they lose the hydrogen and then connect the green carbon with the red carbon. Okay, I want everything that is not along the carbon backbone to be out of the way. That means this hydrogen must go up and not here. Same for the red ones as well. Okay, and then this one is there. All right, so if I just draw another molecule, this is just showing example, so you can see how polymers are formed. By the way, this polymers, actually, you don't always have chlorine in this position, okay? The monomers can also flip. Uh, flip horizontally, right? And then you get the chlorine here. And that is fine still. But for your syllabus, you don't have to worry about that, okay? So what happens when three monomers combine three or more or n, n monomers, n number of monomers combine, what happens is the double bond will break and they form a new bond with the neighboring carbon. That's why it's important for you to put the carbons next to each other, okay? So to complete the diagram, like that, okay? To show that it is a polymer. So this is an example if you have three. Maybe I use this. Uh, orange three molecules of ch2 oh h cl okay so you notice that i like to get them out of the way and just focus on the c double bond c to be in the backbone or in the straight line those carbons came from my c double bond c okay Right. This is an example of structural formula. I've talked about this. The next part is basically things that I have already explained to you. Okay, so have a read. And then they should be 
there shouldn't be anything new. Okay, the next one that we're going to look at is just the example, I believe. So uses of PVC, again, this was in my previous notes, so I thought I'll include it in my slides. Um, PVC is used in pipes, waterproof clothing, and insulation on electrical wires. So that means it's a, a non-conductor, okay? It's an insulator. Exercise number one, identify the monomer present in the given sections of addition polymer molecules. Now you're given a section of a polymer. You want to know the monomer. Okay, now remember monomer is closely related to repeating unit. So you have to identify the repeating section in this polymer. Okay, so I don't know how fast you can spot it. The repeating section of this polymer is the one highlighted in green. Okay, so it's C. O H H. So this is an this is called an ethenol, right? Now monomer must contain double bond because it is the starting material. So all you have to do is just add the bond to what looks like a repeating unit to you. Okay. So this is the monomer ethenol. Quick. And you have to learn to be quick because this question is essentially usually just one mark. And if you take a very long time, then you are uh, wasting your time. Okay. Next, ah, this is where it starts to uh, get confusing. Okay. Because, because why? You see the H and the carbon, it looks like they are you know, forming a bond or something, okay? If you cannot see this, I suggest you to re redraw it, right? So what is actually happening here? If I just number the carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's along the main chain. I don't know if you can see it or not. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got a hanging bond. On carbon number one, I've got two hydrogens. Carbon number two, I've got hydrogen and a COOH. Okay, so simple, right? But can look complicated. And if you cannot see this, redraw it quickly. Don't spend a lot of time redrawing it. Okay, so then you can sort of see the pattern already. And if you cannot see that, again, Number them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So looking at carbon five, you have H2. That means H up and bottom. And on carbon six, you've got a hydrogen and COOH. Okay, so from here, the repeating unit looks like that. How do you know? Imagine you copy this, you paste it paste it, continue to paste it, and it should give you the same molecule, uh, polymer, okay? So that's your repeating unit. You want to know the monomer. So monomer is closely related to repeating unit in such a way that instead of having a C single bond C, monomer will have a C double bond C. That's it, just add the double bond. So this is your monomer. Is that okay? Next one is this, question three, okay? Remember, monomer minimum has to have two carbons, okay? Because if you don't have monomers that has two carbon, then you're not using the alkene. You need the double bond there, right? So in the next example, repeating unit will have to be minimum two carbons, right? Again, so that's repeating unit. 
minimum two carbon atoms because monomer also has the same requirement, minimum two carbon atoms. You can't have a monomer with one carbon atom along the backbone. Otherwise, how are you going to draw the double bond? Okay, so monomer would be again similar to your repeating unit, except that instead of having a C single bond C, it has a C double bond C. There. Okay, simple. All right, the next one is to recognize the difficulty of the disposal of polyalkenes, i.e. non-biodegradability and harmful combustion products. So this is just reading, okay? If there's anything you don't understand, but I think should be fine, they're not, uh, they're quite relatable to you, okay? So with that, I end the lesson here. Um, before I go, I would just like to remind you to fill in the form, okay, uh, for the post-test, oh, never mind, I think for this one, there's no post-test questionnaire on forms, okay, assalamualaikum and thank you everyone.